Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to the Sheep Pen, bah, where no goats are allowed. So, uh, I'm a day behind on my production schedule, and it's due greatly to uh, the impact that this movie, Sound of Freedom, had on me emotionally. Uh, I set out and promised to uh, create a video yesterday, Wednesday, after seeing the movie on Tuesday. But to be quite honest with you, it had such an emotional impact on me, I couldn't gather my thoughts for a whole day. I had to take a personal mental health day after seeing this movie. And it's because many of you know I'm an abuse survivor. And so this movie had a special impact on me. And I want to talk about how come this movie has triggered so many people. That this has become a lightning rod of uh, controversy. And I think it's because this is one of those movies that makes you feel something. And it just depends, depending on who you are, uh, it, that dictates how you feel and what kind of emotions that it produces in you. So this movie is quite controversial. And one of the big reasons it's controversial is not even because of the uh, child trafficking uh, theme of the movie, but rather the uh, press coverage of this movie. And so, you know, there's a saying that, um, you know, you're over the target when you come under fire. So there were some uh, hit pieces produced uh, about this movie, attacking anybody who supported the movie, people who liked the movie, and so forth. And as far as I can decipher after giving it much thought. You know, I'm a little late coming to the party uh, weighing in on this movie. Uh, it's been out since the 4th of July. And part of it is I like to wait for everything to play out in something before I weigh in on it. I want to make sure I have all the information and see everything from, uh, you know, every angle possible. And that's one of the reasons you tune into this channel is that I, I tend to bring you a point of view that is something that um, diff is a little different than other people's point of view. So to say that there are people who love this movie, who think this movie is extremely important in our time and in our culture, that this is a topic we need to talk about, and there's some very emotional support for this movie. But on the other side, you've got some of these major media outlets, which I won't name, who have produced these hit pieces that are very insulting they're very insulting to people who like the movie, to the people who produced the movie. And the big question is why? Well, people jump to conclusions that if you're against this movie, you must be for child trafficking. And I think that that's a valid point, that you could jump to that conclusion. But there's another angle to this that people haven't thought about, the angle where this movie, how this movie affected me. See, if you're a parent, you're going to have strong emotions about the plight that these children are forced into, the horrific life that they are made to uh, engage in. They're snatched from their homes and families, sometimes off the street, sometimes through trickery, and um, sometimes as a result of economic or warlike situations in their home country. And so they're vulnerable. And these children are forced into this lifestyle, literally, quite literally, forced into it under the threat of death and the threat of, uh, against their families as well. And so um, it can produce in people who are parents a very strong protective feeling. As a man who's raised children, as a man who is involved in uh, the training and guidance of children as a youth pastor, I most definitely had that emotion hit me the minute this movie started. That I was filled with a white hot anger against people who hurt children. That was so strong it took me a couple of days to get past it. Right? It really did. I'm going to try not to cry while making this video. Uh, the other side of that anger was the feelings that I had as an abuse survivor. And I think that's one of the triggering elements of this movie that people haven't... Uh, thought about. That some of the people that are against the movie, some of the people on both sides who are uh, vehemently against it 
and, uh, and are coming out in almost irrational responses to it, and people on the other side who are such staunch supporters of it and so emotional about it. A, a certain percentage of those people are abuse survivors themselves. Nothing on the level of what we saw in the movie, but it can definitely trigger in you these memories of your own childhood abuse surviving, you know, surviving abuse as a child. And so that was part of the emotion that affected me from watching this movie. And then, you know, so that could be one of the reasons why somebody might be against the movie, that when you have walked away from childhood abuse and you haven't uh, gone through the healing process, uh, any discussion of any topic like that can trigger a, shut up, I don't want to hear it, stop talking kind of response to people, you know. People can have that kind of response. Uh, they can also have the response I had, white-hot anger. I got white-hot angry, like I wanted to do something about it, right? That the first 20 minutes or 30 minutes of that movie, I was so angry, I was shaking all over. And then through the rest of the movie, I pretty much cried nonstop, you know? And um, so maybe, giving the benefit of the doubt, some of the people that are opposed to this movie are having a knee-jerk reaction because of their own unhealed victimhood. That they were victims as, of something similar as a child, and they don't want to hear about it, they don't want to talk about it, they don't want you making movies about it. So, one another element of that is that a person might want you to stop talking about it, uh, stop making the movie about it, they might want to destroy the movie and stop it dead in its tracks, because they are, in fact, in favor of abusing children and there's an alarming number of people in our society who are working tirelessly towards lowering the age of consent, consent so they can have access to these children legally and this movie uh, is not good for their cause and that's the thing that most people jump to if you're against this movie you must be for child trafficking and that could be so I'm not saying that's not the case in some of the uh, motivation behind people who are opposing this movie. Another reason people might write a hit piece about this movie, go online and, and, and tell you you shouldn't watch it, go online and make fun of it or demean the people who go and see it. Another reason is it's in your financial best interest. Let's talk about that for a minute because this movie was in fact very difficult to make and they were uh, actors who took part in this movie were told that this this would be uh, suicide for their career. They were told they would never work in this town again. And um, not to mention the fact that this movie was greenlit by a production company. And then the Disney Corporation bought the production company and shelled the, the project and refused to work on the project. And as I understand, they had to purchase the rights to their own movie back so they could make this movie uh, through, I believe it's Angel is the production company. Uh, a faith-based production company who finally decided to buck the system and make this movie. Jim Caviezel is, is quoted uh, as the source a lot of times for the criticism because they want to lump him into a conspiracy theory category because of some of the things he said. And the fact of the matter is all conspiracy theories are based in some sort of fact or they would not be believable at all. So there is definitely a conspiracy out there to um, abuse children, a conspiracy amongst people who want to be able to legally have the right to hurt kids and do things to kids. And it's part of this, um, man I have to be so careful on YouTube, but it's part of this almost seems like a larger conspiracy from the Christian perspective to sexualize young people. That's the best way to say this. I hope I don't get a strike. but. Hey, if I got to go out, if I got to be taken out for something, let it be taken out for defending children. But um, let them take me out for that. So there is, without a doubt, an element within the Hollywood industry who doesn't want this topic talked about for their own sick reasons. But that may not be why everyone is against it. There may be some people who are triggered by this movie because of their own uh, situation where they are unhealed from their own childhood surviving, you know, surviving childhood abuse. And that can make you not want to hear about it. That can make you want to become an activist against it, right? It has a lot of different ways it can affect people. 
And so I think the assumption that just because you someone speaks out against this movie, they must be for the bad thing it's about. Some of it may just be emotional triggering because of their own uh, brokenness, right? But then there's an, an undoubtedly an element that is business related. Why would Disney Corporation want to stop this movie from being made? One could, this could be conspiracy theory land, but one might assume that some money was spread around to suppress this movie, to block it. And I think one of the big reasons is because it was up against Indiana Jones, the big blockbuster summer movie. And quite frankly, it seems to be it seems to be whooping its butt, even though this movie was made on a fraction of the budget that the big uh, the big budget summer blockbuster Indiana Jones movie uh, used. I mean, they used a lot of money to make that movie. This movie was done on a shoestring budget, and I gotta say, it didn't look like it was done on a shoestring budget, and the acting was impeccable. Now, touched on that, Disney might want to suppress this movie because it's cutting into their summertime profits. Uh, people might want to suppress this movie because they have a political agenda and it's not to protect our children. But other people may want to suppress this movie from their own emotional brokenness. That's a, an element to this that I've not heard anyone talk about, that this movie is triggering. And I can testify to that. It triggered in me strong emotions that took me a full day to overcome. In the history of movie making, there are a handful of movies for me that have produced this kind of emotional reaction. Roots, that produced in me an emotional reaction. As a young boy, when this movie came out, I was aware of the history of slavery, and I saw it as a part of our historical past and not really relevant in our present time, and I had a disconnect to the uh, plight of the African American community and the scars that were still present over 110 years at that point from, uh, you know, from the end of slavery in our country. Another movie that springs to mind that gave me this kind of guttural reaction that caused me to be a little bit traumatized for days afterwards and in some cases caused me to see the movie only once, but Schindler's List is another movie that made me feel these strong emotions like this movie Sound of Freedom made me feel. With Schindler's List, I was awakened to the true horrific nature of what happened over there. You can see all of the World War II, um, you know, liberation of prison prisoners of war and and uh, prison camps that held the Jewish people uh, during that time, where they were basically an attempt. There was an attempt to euthanize, not euthanize, was the genocide the entire uh, race of Jews in Europe, and this was definitely a goal. And you can know all of that and study it in school and understand it on a, on the surface. But a movie like Schindler's List brought it to the front, and I fully understood the horrific nature of what happened over there, and it made it very real for me that that's a movie I cried through. I cried in Roots. I cried when I saw Schindler's List, and I cried when I saw Sound of Freedom. Now, there's a lot of truth-based, reality-based movies, movies based on reality. Uh, Aaron Brockovich is a movie that springs to mind. And there's a handful of those like that. A Time to Kill is another movie that brought uh, certain problems to the, to the forefront and made public awareness about an issue uh, become white hot in the public eye. And But to me, those movies fell short of Roots, Schindler's List, and Sound of Freedom when it comes to making you feel a certain way and bringing to the forefront a problem uh, that exist in the world. Now, uh, those critics who say this is a conspiracy theory, those critics who say that this is this is uh, Q-based, okay, uh, are just lying because the man who uh, produced the movie, uh, Tim Ballard, is a real person who really worked for the, our United States government, who really did quit his job to rescue children who were being trafficked, and who really was successful. And these stories come from a very real perspective. So people, whether they're triggered, whether they're in favor of child trafficking, or whether they're being paid off by some major corporation to try to suppress or uh, cause this movie not to be seen, regardless, uh, 
the claims that this movie is not fact-based, the claim that this movie is somehow conspiratorial or Q-based is false from front to back because this is real. This child trafficking is real. Tim Ballard is a real person and he's somebody that's testified in front of Congress, sat down with presidents, and until this movie was made and these people who tried to suppress it got their marching orders, Tim Ballard was actually a very celebrated man that they were, uh, one, one might say, puff pieces or support pieces made about his endeavor and his, his uh, company, uh, Operation Underground Railroad, his uh, nonprofit organization who have risked their life, their fortunes, and their, their, their families and everything else to try to put a stop to uh, child trafficking and to rescue children caught in this horrible crime. And so, um, yes, there are people that are saying that this isn't real or that in some way it's made up. And uh, it's, that's, a, that's a lie. That's an absolute lie. And Tim Ballard in a recent interview that I saw said all of these people that are claiming this is some way fictionalized and this stuff doesn't really go on and it's not to the degree that people say it is they're about to get slapped down by these two children because the movie Sound of Freedom are about two children two children that Tim Ballard saved a brother and a sister his heroic efforts his um, self-sacrifice literally laying his own life on the line by going undercover to locate these two kids and get them out and in the process he saved in the movie they talk about 50 children but uh, the real number is actually more like 120 children that this operation that this movie is based on actually freed from trafficking from slavery and these two kids according to Tim Ballard are adults now and they are ready to come out and tell their story. And he said, all of you who are claiming this isn't real, all of you that are claiming this is fictionalized, all of you who are claiming we're making this up, you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, what is it, eat crow. You're gonna eat crow when these two kids come out and tell their story because they're about to. And I gotta say that this movie really is about two children. It's not even really about Tim Ballard. It's not about his family. It's not even about his job. This movie is a movie about two kids who were rescued from hell. The young actors who played the role of these two children were uh, did an exquisite job, especially the little boy. The little boy, I think his name was in the movie, the character was Miguel. They named him Teddy Bear. The traffickers did. But that little boy, even though he didn't speak a word of English in the movie and everything was subtitled, what an amazing child actor. That kid made you feel his pain. That kid had a way of expressing his emotions, and uh, honestly, I think, uh, I don't know, do they nominate kids for Oscars? This kid's a natural, right? And I expect to see more of him in future movies because uh, he was able to convey emotions that adult-trained actors uh, work their whole career and never get a handle on. This movie is about two kids, a brother and a sister, and their survival story. And it's about the very real man, Tim Ballard, who rescued them from this at great risk to his own, his own life, his own finances. His, he literally quit his job to rescue these kids. And now it's his new job. So this movie is very emotional. It will, if, if you go to this movie and you don't have emotions, you might want to have your medication adjusted. Okay? Because you are numb on some level. That this, I don't see how anybody sits through a movie like this or a movie like Schindler's List or a movie like Roots and doesn't feel strong emotions. It, it, the true story of overcoming oppression, whether it be at the hands of the, uh, uh, of the villains of World War II or the hands at, uh, you know, at the hands of the villains of the Old South or at the hands of these traffickers, the story of overcoming this level of oppression and slavery is impactful. Amistad is another movie that made you feel things. And the difference is this is a topic that is under attack by certain elements who have an agenda. There are people that want to make this legal. There are people that want to lower the age of consent so they can have access to children. And to quote Jim Caviezel, the uh, star of the show, the man who played Tim Ballard, these people, some of them, are at very high levels in Hollywood. 
that there are people with a lot of power and clout in Hollywood who have a thing for kids. And this is coming from Jim. Okay, Jim Caviezel, a star, first uh, came on the scene in my in my knowledge uh, in the movie Frequency, where he did a great job in that kind of uh, family-oriented sci-fi movie about time travel through the radio. Uh, that was the first time I saw him, and of course, Jim also is very triggering to people who hate Christianity because Jim's Jesus. Okay, <laughs> Jim Caviezel played Jesus Christ in the movie The Passion of the Christ, and another controversial movie. That was the last film to, I have to put that one up there with um, these other movies that I've talked about that really produce strong emotions in viewers. Now, having said that, one of the reasons that Sound of Freedom is so much more powerful for me and produced even stronger emotions than any of those other films is because those other films were historical. They were about things that happened before I was born. I was not born when people were overcoming slavery in the Deep South. I was not born when people were, uh, were fighting for their lives in, in prison camps in Europe during World War II. That was all historical things from another generation. This movie, Sound of Freedom, produced strong feelings in me because it's happening on my watch. This is something that's going on in my lifetime. I can't go back in time and do anything about what happened to the people in Roots. I can't go back in time and do anything about the people that what happened to the people at you know in Schindler's List. But this is something that's a current and undealt with issue worldwide. According to the makers of this movie, this is a hundred and fifty-eight billion dollar a year industry, child trafficking. It has surpassed uh, human trafficking, at least. And I'm not sure if it's just child or human in general. It's all slavery, right? This has surpassed uh, gun smuggling, uh, arms dealing, uh, in financial gain. That this is more lucrative than that. And it's about to surpass the lucrative, underground, uh, despicable business of drug trafficking. That human trafficking is the fastest growing industry. Uh, and under, uh, you know, uh, underworld, dark web oriented kind of thing. It, it's on the march. It's growing and we need to stop it. Anyone who says we don't need to stop it, there's something wrong with you if you ask me. But that's an opinion that, that uh, a well-adjusted, loving, caring human being could not have. That if this doesn't move you to want to put an end to child trafficking, nothing will. There's something uh, amiss in your psyche. You're missing some basic form part of humanity that others have. Like I said, you need to adjust your medication, you're numb. And so, I think a lot of the people who, who are ripping this movie are ripping it for a lot of reasons and none of them, in my opinion, <laughs> have seen it. Because if you sit through this movie, I don't see how you would want to shut down this discussion. I don't see why you would want to belittle this film. Because the topic alone is worthy of being talked about and is a crisis in our world, not just in our country. The fact that America is the destination for many of these third world children to come here and to be kept in some basement and used and treated like cattle is something that we as good uh, humans, you know, they always say it's, you know, that, that people who are critics of Christianity say, look, you know, I don't have to be a Christian. Can't I just be a good person? Well, if you're a good person, you're going to be against child trafficking. Am I right? Can I get an amen? Okay. So this movie is a very important film. Um, in the film, at the very end, Jim Caviezel comes out and does a special message. If you wait till the end of the credits, there's a, a message for him from him there where he encourages you to buy people tickets, to spread it around, to, to buy tickets and give them out to your friends because this movie is supposed to only, according to him, be in the theater theaters for a couple of weeks. So go see this movie. Uh, bite the bullet and, and experience the emotions that this movie produces. If you um, want to put a stop to this, then this movie is one of the best ways to raise awareness. And it is a, a, a small budget independent film that doesn't have the big money backers and it's relying on ticket sales and apparently it's doing great as I understand as of yesterday this would be the uh, the Wednesday after the 4th of July week uh, as of Wednesday what was that the 12th or the 11th uh, of July 
it was number one in the box office okay so this film is a breakout hit and it's getting a huge amount of support and I encourage you to support this film by seeing it by encouraging others to go see it and the simple raising awareness that this goes on this is not a conspiracy theory children are being bought and sold and sometimes for as little as 30 US dollars and to quote the movie, God's children aren't for sale. Boy, that was a powerful moment. There was another powerful moment when Jim Capiazel, uh nails the pedophile. I'm using language here that may get me in trouble with YouTube, but uh, he, he nails this criminal. And in that moment when he reveals he's an undercover cop, he reveals it by quoting Jesus when he says, It's better to tie a millstone around your neck and throw yourself into the sea than it is to hurt one of these, my little children. <laughs> that was a powerful moment that he when he quoted Jesus. That's Jesus' take on this. So if you care about kids, if you care about your own kids, if you remember being a kid, even if you're an abuse survivor and this triggers un, uh, uh, uncomfortable, old, unhealed feelings from the past, see it anyway. Because this is a very important topic. If this movie isn't recognized by the Academy, if this movie isn't recognized uh, by all of the Hollywood stars as being an important film, then I would question what feelings this produced in them and why they're against it. Because it's righteous from front to back. I do like that they don't show the details of what happens to these kids. Everything is implied, but it's still so emotionally moving. Because those kid actors, they make you feel their pain. They're able to express emotion. And those kids ought to be recognized, especially the little the little guy there who's the, the main the main child character in the movie. He gets the most screen time. And uh, he definitely has the uh, God-given ability, in my opinion, to make you feel something through his acting. So go see this movie. Don't get too bent out of shape for people that fight against it. Yes, hey, maybe they are on the dark side, but chances are they might be getting triggered by uh, their own unhealed brokenness from their own childhood as I was. It took me a full day to kind of recover from this. I couldn't think clearly enough to make this video. But I do believe the movie was well acted. It involved great actors and actresses. Uh, I don't have any criticism other than I would like to have seen Mira Savino get a better opportunity to show her acting chops. Uh, her role was underplayed. If you talk to Tim Ballard and hear him talk about his wife, she was a one of the primary things that made all of this possible because she encouraged him to leave home and hearth, to give up his financial security, to go out in the world and save some kids. So do your part, spread this movie, bring this to the forefront of awareness, and uh, don't be too judgmental about people who don't like this movie because it may be coming from a position of brokenness. And then again, they may be purveyors of the dark side themselves. Don't, 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 or just paid off by the competition to suppress this summer blockbuster. We'll see you next time here on The Sheet Pen.